Hello and welcome to Happy English School and to our Happy Tale series. Today we're going to read a brilliant story called Mary Poppins. This is the first chapter of this story and I really encourage you to read everything to the end. And there is also a brilliant movie filmed long, long time ago. And from that movie I learned how to pronounce the word that makes all your problems disappear. It's supercalifragilisticexpialidocious. Supercalifragilisticexpialidocious. All right, let's start reading. If you want to find Cherry Tree Lane, you should ask the policeman at the crossroads. He will say, First to your right, second to your left, then right again, and you are there. And if you do exactly what he tells you to do, you will come to Cherry Tree Lane. On one side of the street there are houses. On the other side there is a park with cherry trees in it. If you are looking for number 17, you will very soon find it. It is the only one that needs a new coat of paint. Mr. Banks, who lived in this house, said to his wife that they have to choose. They could have a nice clean house, all four children, but they didn't have money for both. Mrs. Banks thought about this and decided to have John, Jane, Michael and Barbara. So that is why the Banks family came to live at number 17. They had Mrs. Brill who cooked for them and Ellen to lay the tables. Also they had Robertson to cut the lawn and clean the knives and polish the shoes. As Mr. Banks always said, to waste his time and my money. And of course there was Katie Nana who should not really come into the story, because by this time, she, being very angry, had left the house. I'm not working with those children, she said as she left. Oh, what shall we do? said Mrs. Banks. Just write to the morning paper, said Mr. Banks, putting on his shoes. And say that John, Jane, Michael and Barbara Banks need the best possible nanny at the lowest possible wage and that we need her right now. Now I must go to work. Mr. Banks said goodbye to his wife and left the house. He went down the street with his black bag in his hand. Mrs. Banks went into the living room, sat down and wrote letters to the newspapers all day. She wrote that the Banks family needed the best nanny in the world. Upstairs in the house, Jane and Michael sat near the window. They watched the birds in the trees and wondered who would come. They were glad Katie and Nana had gone, for they had never liked her. She was old and fat and smelt of barley water. Anything they thought would be better than Kate and Anna, if not much better. At the end of the afternoon, Mrs. Brill and Ellen came to give them their dinner and to bath their two youngest children. After dinner, the children sat at the window again and waited for their father to come home. They were listening to the sound of the east wind blowing through the branches of the cherry trees in the lane. There he is, cried Michael. There was somebody in the street, but it was very hard to see in the dark. That's not Daddy, Jane said. That's somebody else. The children looked carefully when the person came nearer. They could now see that it was a woman with a bag in one hand. The wind was strong and she held her hat with her other hand. 
When she came into the garden, a strange thing happened. The wind seemed to lift her up and throw her at the house. When she came down, she knocked at the door and the whole house shook. How funny, said Michael. I've never seen that happen before. Let's go and see who it is, said Jane and took Michael's hand. Jane and Michael ran to the stairs from where they could see everything in the hall. They saw their mother with a visitor. The lady had shiny black hair. She was thin and had large feet and hands and blue eyes. She looks like a wooden doll, whispered Jane. You'll find that they're very nice children said Mrs. Banks. They are never a problem. She didn't believe in what she said, and she felt that the visitor understood it. Do you have a letter of recommendation? asked Mrs. Banks. Oh, why never have those letters? said the woman. Mrs. Banks didn't know what to say. I thought people usually have letters of recommendation when they come to work in a new house. Nobody does these days, you know, answered the visitor. Mrs. Banks was afraid to do not like everybody else, so she quickly agreed. That's fine. I don't think we need a letter. Let's go to see the children. They're upstairs in their bedroom. Certainly the visitor followed Mrs. Banks upstairs but not in the usual way. She sat on the banisters and slid up them with a bag in her hand. Jane and Michael often slid down them, but to slide up was something really new. They looked curiously at the strange new visitor. Mrs. Banks saw nothing, as she didn't look behind her. The visitor go to the children's bedroom at the same time as their mother. Everything will be fine, said Mrs. Banks, when she saw Jane and Michael on the stairs. Why, children? What are you doing here? I'd like you to meet your new nanny, Mary Poppins. Jane, Michael, say how do you do? And those are the youngest children, said Mrs. Banks and looked at the bedroom. Mary Poppins looked at the children very carefully for a very long minute. Will we do? said Michael. Michael, don't be naughty, said his mother. Mary Poppins sniffed loudly and said, I'll work here. Mrs. Banks left Mary Poppins with the children and went to the living room. How did you come here? Jane asked. It looked as if the wind brought you. It did, said the new nanny as she took off her hat and her coat. Then Mary Poppins put her bag on the table and opened it. Why, there is nothing in it, said Jane. Nothing in it, did you say? She did not look very pleased and started to take things from the bag. First, she took out some soap, then a toothbrush and a small armchair, and lots of other things. The children just looked. Could all this be true? But I saw, whispered Michael, it was empty. Mary Poppins then took out a large bottle with the words one teaspoon at bedtime on it. She poured some from the bottle into a teaspoon. Is that for you? Michael asked. No, it's for you, Mary Poppins answered. I don't want it. I'm not sick. I won't. But Mary Poppins looked at him and Michael quickly discovered that there was no other way. He closed his eyes and drank from the spoon. A happy smile came to his face. Strawberry ice, he shouted. Delicious! 
Mary Poppins poured some for Jane. Raspberry, said Jane and smiled. Mary Poppins turned to their youngest children. Jane and Michael could tell that in the spoon this time there was milk. Then she poured out some more and took it herself. Now, into bed, said Mary Poppins and helped them button up their pyjamas. In a minute, the children were in bed and looked at their new nanny. There was something very strange and special about her. Will you stay with us forever? asked Michael. I will leave when the wind changes, she said and put out a candle. And that's it. Thank you for joining me today. Like this video. This is the easiest way to say thank you. And see you next time with a new fairy tale. Bye.